The cover art request this week by EB was very clever. I love cover requests when I feel like they are real cover stories. Like these are things that could have possibly happened in the story. And seeing Sanji stare at this shark that has three swords and Zoro's just there sleeping, you feel the essence of One Piece. So I absolutely loved it, right? But like Sanji staring at this shark right now, for the people that aren't subscribed, I want you to look at a subscribe button just like this. But what I want you to do is subscribe, all right? Drop a like as well. We're about to get into this breakdown, a very packed chapter. So make sure you're subbed and buckle in so that we can enjoy ourselves, all right? So without further ado, let's talk about One Piece chapter one. 2013. Subverting expectations. Oda's really good at that, and he did that in this chapter again. This was a special situation where we had Nami, Usopp, Alti, Big Mom, of course, Tama as well. And these individuals, Oda had to carefully craft a way for it all to make sense and follow specific character tropes, and I think he did that seamlessly. There's a residual effect from mothering mode that leaves a bad taste in some people's mouths. Based on where this could have gone, I think it's gone very well. Last chapter felt like it was setting up Nami's final fight, where it's going to be Nami versus Alti, but then you were worried about what was going to happen with Big Mom. Like, how could Oda write Big Mom out of the story? I mean, the easy way could have been Kid coming a bit early and then occupying Big Mom's attention, but he didn't do that. I think something that we have to understand, and I had to come to terms with this, is that Nami never had a chance with Ulti. It's so crazy because I think Oda tricked me into almost believing he was going to make Nami at some point overcome Ulti, right? Because initially when they encountered each other, it's like Nami has no chance against Ulti. Usopp has no chance against Page One. So after seeing what Big Mom did to Page One, I thought this was a setup, a perfect setup for Nami versus Ulti. And again, boom, Oda did something that we did not expect. Quickly, before we talk about Big Mom's homies, is the art in this chapter. Gotta say, the thigh Nami was given was given everything it was supposed to give. And the art, especially Nami, looked particularly sharp. Again, these are very packed chapters, so the details have to be refined. And I think it was done very well, especially the tornado tempo. I thought that looked beautiful, right? But to the drama story between Big Mom's homies and loosely involving big mom big mom has yet again gotten another power up in which she can combine her homies she combined napoleon prometheus and hera now hera we hadn't seen her and how she looked before we find out that she's a cloud just like zeus but we get more backstory than expected but before that nami was captured by ulti and ulti was about to bash her head in something that we can't forget is that ulti almost forced luffy to gear forth so ulti wasn't lying about her grip and i think nami taking that attack it would have been over for her so big mom saved her but it was basically basically payback for Otama. But now, where does that leave us? Big Mom has taken out Page One and Ulti, so what's left for Usopp and Nami? This is not the end for Nami and Usopp when it comes to proving themselves and having great moments, but it's just not what we expected. And of course, that doesn't make it a bad thing. But that entire sequence with Zeus, Prometheus, Hera, is something that I didn't expect, but once I got it, I was like, you know what, this is pretty good. It's crazy because I saw on Twitter recently that someone said Zeus is a better character than Kinemon, and I couldn't stop laughing because Zeus had developed development, man. Zeus is a character, ear quotes, that we had been following for a while and his allegiance was pretty loose. Granted, everything he's done in Wano doesn't match the punishment, but when you go back from Whole Cake Island to now, it's surprising Big Mom didn't replace him already. I've said this before, but everything Big Mom goes through, there's something you can point to to explain it away. And for each one of these homies, I think it represents a unique part of her personality, of herself. Discarding something or someone that's no longer useful to Big Mom is just status quo. That's just what happens, especially when it would benefit Big Mom and make her forces stronger. Of course, Zeus had a change of heart and was willing to take out Big Mom to aid Nami. It was a cool moment, cool sequence, because there are things happening here that I don't think people realize. Because I saw people saying that Zeus is dead. I do not think Zeus is dead at all. Because when you look at the sequence, Big Mom was draining Zeus. Then he was consumed by Hera. Then she says she has power now, a lot of power, but she's also consuming some black balls. <laughs> so personally, I think Zeus is still alive and maybe within the Climatact. So that's not the end of the homie story. More to come with that. And for the people complaining about Big Mom saying, well, now she's turned on Tama. Yes, because Tama was about to abandon her. Big Mom has abandonment issues. We have to understand, Big Mom is a severely flawed character. A character that is an adult who has not gotten over her child childhood issues and because she's an adult now she has the power to cause more devastation and so her being the way she is it's a bit more toxic and until she comes to terms with these things it's going to consistently happen if you don't like what's happening with big mom go back to her childhood go back and see the things that's happened to her and then you will understand why she's doing the things she's doing now it's pretty obvious oda is carefully setting up big mom coming to terms with her past right the abandonment mother carmel her friends her consuming her friends and getting even more powerful after 
after getting Mother Carmel's devil fruit. So it's crazy how Big Mom does things. And even unconsciously, that's how she's operated. That's how she's gotten to where she is. So Hera trying to consume Zeus to gain more power, that's what Big Mom did. But eventually Oda's gonna flesh that out. But in the meantime, it's not terrible at all. Kid, Kid came in and with Punk Gibson, I gotta be honest with you guys. Punk Gibson is a move that we've seen it so many times. I'm, I'm quite tired of it. I think that's why I'm so disappointed with Kid, but then it goes back to Oda. But, it, but again, we're not over. There's still things Kid could do, but it seems so lackluster and it lacks creativity for a devil fruit that we all assumed would be brimming with that. It's the ultimate devil fruit to experiment with and Kid being a mechanic and engineer, you expected so many different designs. So to see Punk Gibson and again personally i think it took away from the moment because kid just overpowered a yonko kid so far i don't think has had enough feats he was hyped up to be a significant character and he's been significant for the most part but when you stack him up to luffy he falls short but that's a lot of people however that was the inclination that he could at some point compete with luffy this is major you know when you compare it to what luffy's doing it's like eh, he just made big mom fall but he overpowered her with his punk gibson and of course he's going to get beaten he can't beat big mom but it's a cool moment and I think we should give Kid his props. Let's not let it get lost in translation because we're tired of Punk Gibson and seeing it for the 50th time. Like, it's it's okay. The final panel, and we're going to spend some time here. I think this has taken Wano to another level. It's increasing the tension for me, where I felt like at moments tension was lacking. Like, it would pick up. Initially, the first encounter with Nami, Usopp, Page One, Ulti, there was a bit of tension there, then it was ripped away. And so where we are now, it seemed like it was setting up for the final act of the arc and now here we go luffy's falling down we presume into the sea actually but i think what kaido says here that's something that we have to focus on because kaido is becoming i say it week to week a very layered character a very complex character a character with much more understanding than first perceived because when you look at his crew brutes a meritocracy everything about him is power 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 but there's some underlying issues that we got to talk about yes the drinking was the first red flag now the strained relationship with his kid the seemingly ptsd between him and odin and the longing to die but not just die die in a superb way what kaido says here about his expectations luffy got cocky he got a new weapon and he got overconfident kaido also says that humans always cling to faith and in a way they can't afford to abandon it and that can be dangerous i think right here kaido is described in a straw has i plan on making a video about losing faith in your captain but the disappointment from Kaido is a bit deeper than just, this was a good fight, I really wanted to enjoy it. I wonder how far back this goes. This disappointment, his words about him making a mistake, saying he should have taken his head as a trophy as opposed to throwing him overboard. What I like about it is that it continues a theme that was set up at the beginning of the arc, even all the way back then with Luffy's first encounter. We all saw Luffy and Kaido in their first tussle, but in that moment as well, Oda highlighted Ashura and other people watching Luffy go against Kaido surprised that someone would even try to do so building their faith and we saw just how dejected people were after luffy he lost but this is a deep thing faith and how important it is especially in one piece and how it revolves around the straw hat crew that's something that has been a core theme some may say blind faith in luffy but he's earned that belief everything he's gotten them through how could you not believe even in the last chapter zoro and sanji they both believed they had faith that Luffy would win. And Kaido could have destroyed that. He said it. And I think I like the reflection because it's something that we agree with. Yes, you should have taken his head and showed them. So that would completely destroy the faith in the Alliance. Now we got to think about the go board. And when they talk about, hey, just taking out the head is not going to destroy the armies. But it seems to be different for the Alliance because so much depends on Luffy and the faith they have in him. If they see Luffy fall, that could completely demoralize the forces because of how much he got them going where in kaido's case they said well just taking out the head that's not going to stop everyone else and the sequence of events in which oda is handling all of these different encounters i keep wondering will he change the format yes this reminds us of crocodile where luffy you know at some point he went against crocodile got defeated once twice three times came back and he eventually defeated him i think looking at kaido a lot of people did question luffy's growth and how he was able to contest kaido even though he had just unlocked conqueror's hockey coding people take taken aback saying well luffy right now fighting kaido I, I made a video about just how people's perception of luffy was and they had valid points where luffy at this point shouldn't have been able to fight kaido and this confirms it 
where I had said, I don't think Luffy would be Kaido 1v1 because I expect Law to go back to the rooftop or Law and Zoro at some point could aid Luffy. Yes, Zoro has so many broken bones. This is one piece. Broken bones, whatever. Luffy's tooth grew back by drinking milk. I don't want to hear that, okay? But this is a very important moment in Wano. This is something that we will remember going forward where it could be a shift. I've been waiting for this. I'm not sure if you guys remember in the past I'd mentioned there's going to be a moment. We feel like it's over, like Luffy is done. This is the moment. Moment. There's a moment in every arc where Luffy has his fight, and it feels like this was the moment where the tide was shifting, where Luffy can't do it. Now, this doesn't necessarily equate to failure. We're not going to go to that extreme, but the Yonko, specifically Kaido, they needed this moment building tension, setting it up for the final act, the true final act, where Luffy comes back, and you guessed it, a new gear. Gear 4th is no longer acceptable. I think based on how Luffy has been fighting so far, it is clear to me, maybe to others as well, that Luffy in his base form is more comfortable using these advanced techniques as opposed to Gear 4th, which things are very inefficient and maybe using a lot more. We saw how things were detrimental to the Alliance after Luffy went out. We can't afford to do that anymore. So are things done? No, but we have to be cautious because this is the turning point and things may start to slip in the Beast Pirate's favor for a moment, momentarily, but it will shift back. It is not over for Star Hat Luffy. We'll talk about who could possibly save him, who could be showing up, Grand Fleet, all these different things in the prediction video because we have a break next week, unfortunately. But guys, I want you to give me your thoughts right now. What are you thinking? How do you feel about all this? Are you okay with Luffy getting clobbered the way he did? We need a flashback. We need to see exactly what happened and walk through this moment because I think Kaido lost control of himself. Where he got so fired up, he thought Luffy could give him the fight that he's been waiting for. He's been robbed in the past with his fight against Odin by the old hag. Now, what does he have left? The complexities of Kaido continue to impress. It's only a matter of time before Oda fleshes this all out and tells us exactly what the deal is with Kaido. I mentioned this last week as well with Yamato being so concerned about the 1v1 versus Kaido that something was up, that Kaido may be different the next time we see him fighting and Luffy's falling down, eyes rolled back, utterly defeated. But we know there's no one, no one, with the bounce back or just the resilience that Luffy has. So the last thing, this is a small thing, but Kaido's line about humans clinging to faith. There's so many ways in which you could take dialogue, especially when it comes from Kaido, but it gives off a sense of detachment where either Kaido himself isn't human or Kaido has become the beast and he believes he is a beast. And how he speaks about faith, this gives the inclination that at some point Kaido encountered individuals or maybe Kaido thought like that in the past. I feel like every time Kaido references something or gives us a hint, it's indirectly tying us to his past so i'm really intrigued by that it's very small but i just want to let you guys know that it made me think i'm still thinking and how oda could possibly tie that in because i don't think it was just there for no reason right guys give me your thoughts make sure to like the video if you did subscribe to the channel for more content like this follow me on twitter at brago d ace follow me on instagram at brago d dot ace thank you to my patrons i appreciate you guys so much guys like subscribe i'll catch you in the next one peace Start doubting me, I felt lost. I rewrite it.